Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to discuss the concept of development and more specifically how to measure the economic development of a country. Before we start, let's just recap the definition of development and its various aspects. Development involves the betterment of the economic, social and environmental aspects of a country. Now, as I said, in this video, we are going to discuss or focus only on the economic aspects of development. A reasonable question you may have is, what is the economy? Well, the economy refers to the ability of a country to produce and consume goods and services. The more developed that country's economy, the more goods and services will be produced, as well as more high value goods and services. And through this, more wealth will be produced as well. A country with a strong economy is ideally a country where many people grow wealthier by benefiting from the fruits of that economy. In this video, as we limit our study of development to the economic aspect only, we are going to focus on four key indicators of economic development. These indicators are GDP, GDP per capita, infrastructure, and the structure of the economy. Gross domestic product, or GDP, is defined as the total value of goods and services produced in a country in one year, and is measured using US dollars. One advantage of this is that it makes it easier to compare GDP scores of multiple countries without having to convert currencies first. The higher a country's GDP, the more goods and services a country produces, and the more valuable these products are. All indicators used to measure any kind of development are both good and bad indicators by themselves. We have already discovered why GDP is a good statistic to use because it shows us the size of a country's economy and we can use the score to compare the sizes of different countries economy. GDP is also an unreliable indicator of development however. Because the GDP score is a single total, it doesn't show how wealth is produced by an economy and distributed between the people living there. It also doesn't show if a country is affected by high rates of poverty or unemployment. The total value of the world's GDP is around $92 trillion. That's trillion with a T. This diagram shows all the biggest contributors to the global GDP. You should immediately notice that the largest contributing country is the USA, which produces roughly a quarter of the world's GDP every single year. Second is China, which has a GDP that is about $7 trillion less than the US. You should also be able to notice that there are continents which contribute the most, like North America, Asia and Europe. Feel free to pause the video to have a longer look at the diagram. Every year, 189 countries around the world have their GDP measured, and then this measurement is ranked based on their position in the world. The US is obviously first. It's pretty crazy to note that the US and China, two countries that are first and second respectively, together contribute over 40% of the global GDP. Yet India, which is the fifth largest global economy, contributes a mere three and a half percent. To give you an idea of how big the US economy really is, here's a fun fact. The GDP of the entire European Union is three trillion dollars lower than that of the US. GDP per capita is the next economic indicator that we are going to examine. It is defined as the total GDP of a country divided by the total population. This value is also calculated using the US dollar and it indicates how much the average person should earn in a country in one year. It is a reliable indicator of development as it gives an average income and the quality of life of the average person. It also makes it easier to compare the average income of different countries around the world. The biggest problem, however, is that GDP per capita is highly affected by population size. And it tells us nothing about how much the highest earners are being paid and how much the lowest earners are being paid. To calculate GDP per capita, we need only look at the definition, which is GDP divided by population. 
In this example, we are going to use South Africa and Norway. Norway and South Africa have roughly similar GDP scores, but vastly different population sizes. Norway's GDP of $398 billion divided by her population of 5.3 million shows us that the average Norwegian earns roughly $75,000 a year. South Africa's GDP of $350 billion is divided by her population of roughly 57 million and shows that the average South African earns roughly $6,100 a year. This reveals that one or two things are evident. Either Norway is producing far more goods and services than South Africa, or the goods and services produced by Norway are far more valuable. If we look at the GDP per capita scores around the world, we can notice again that there are certain regions in the world that are having much higher scores than others. North America, Europe and Australia or New Zealand have by far the highest average GDP per capita. The least developed regions in the world according to the GDP cap per capita scores are Africa and subcontinental Asia. Infrastructure refers to the physical structures in a country that help society to operate. We will get onto examples of infrastructure in a bit, but before we get there, I want to quickly explain why infrastructure is important to development. I will do this by using the first example of infrastructure, the internet. Upgrading a country's internet infrastructure, for example from copper cables to fiber, and from 3G to 4G or 5G, allows the people in the country to access far more information much faster and much more reliably. This allows businesses to function more efficiently, which allows them to make more money and employ more people. Examples of infrastructure in a country are extremely varied, from basics like clean water, sewage disposal and electricity production, to roads, railway lines and airports, as well as schools and universities, and the high-tech stuff like advanced internet connection and clean energy production. Finally, we get to the last indicator of economic development, and that is the structure of the economy. Each country's economy is broken up into three different sectors, called the primary sector, the secondary sector, and the tertiary sector. There is actually a fourth sector, called the quaternary sector, but for the purposes of this video, we are going to combine this and the tertiary sector together. Each of these three sectors is characterized by certain kinds of jobs based on the product or service the job provides. Primary sector jobs only involve extracting raw materials from the earth through practices like farming, fishing, mining and forestry. These jobs are generally considered low skilled jobs that do not require much training and education and therefore these jobs are some of the lowest paying available. Secondary sector jobs involve the processing of these raw materials and creating new and refined products through industry and manufacturing. These jobs require more skills and training, like how to use heavy machinery in factories. As a result, these jobs pay considerably more than the primary sector jobs. Examples of jobs in this sector include builders, factory workers and clothing manufacturers. Jobs in the tertiary sector are based in the service industry. These jobs often require years of training and education and therefore generally are the highest paying jobs available. Employment in the tertiary sector includes lawyers, doctors and teachers. Each country in the world has a certain percentage of its workforce employed in each one of the sections we have just learned about and the structure of that country's economy is based on how the sections are distributed. A country with an underdeveloped economy is likely to find most of the working population employed in the primary sector, with very few employed in the secondary and tertiary sectors. This kind of economy will have very low GDP scores as well as GDP per capita, as the jobs are low paying and the workers are largely underskilled. As an economy develops, many of the workers in the primary sector will move to secondary sector employment, leading to higher skilled workers and higher wages. As a result, GDP and GDP per capita scores will start to rise, and quickly. 
a country with a highly developed economy has much more people or most people employed in the tertiary sector, followed then by the secondary sector. A developed economy generally tends to have only a small fraction of its employees in the primary sector. As a result, GDP and GDP per capita scores are likely very high. Let's quickly summarize what we have learned in this video. First, we have learned that economic development can be measured using four indicators, GDP, GDP per capita, infrastructure, and the structure of the economy. And secondly, each of these aspects or indicators is both reliable and unreliable at indicating development in a country. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you found the content enjoyable and educational.